Salamat. God bless you. Good evening, friends. This being the first night, you won't believe me when I say after 40 years of preaching, I'm still nervous tonight. The prophet of God says, if we ever get used to this place, the pulpit, he says we need the cross all over again. So pray for me. I am from Pretoria, South Africa. I was born there. I am of mixed parentage, so that makes me look like you. I am therefore honored to be among brothers and sisters of like precious faith. I was 20 when the message found me. I was married at 21 and became the deacon in the church and started preaching immediately. So by the grace of God, after 40 years, I believe I'm out of the wilderness now. I should be somewhere coming into our jubilee. Amen. It is amazing how Almost everything this year is having its jubilee. Some of you may remember that the President of America, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, was also assassinated November of 1963. So that's another jubilee of presidents over there. Remember that the story written in the Bible, not the story, but the truth about the year of jubilee runs both sides. The slaves who refuse to take the jubilee are marked in the ear and they continue one way. But those slaves who hear the jubilee sounding of the trumpet, something also happens to the ear they heard and they continue in their freedom. It is amazing that God, knowing that after the coming down of those angels, the taking and the opening of that book, knowing that many of us were not around in 63, but because the book had the names, the names were called already when the prophets were preaching those seals. He says the book does not say Oman Neville or Lee Vale. He says the book shows the mystery. And you, by faith, believe the mystery. He says, that's the book calling your name. It's so wonderful. Well, Pretoria is the capital city of South Africa. South Africa is a much bigger country than the island of the Philippines. We have churches and churches and churches in the message. Almost every major city has heard the message and all in between. So in Pretoria, I'm one of a few other churches. We may be bigger in number, but we don't look down on our associate sisters, sister churches. Uh, my last counting was about 15 or so just in the city of Pretoria, one five. But the prophet of God says, when the light or the candle gets lit in your life, you desire to go tell others about it. And that's how some of the churches were born. That's when people received and they felt, I cannot enjoy it alone. What about my mother and my father over there? My brother, my sister, my cousins, my nephews and nieces. God has his ways of spreading this message. Before I begin, I'm a short preacher. <laughs> I'm short in stature also. I um, would like to acknowledge all the cooperating ministers. I may not know you by name, but I hope to get to know you in the next four days. I got to hear about Reynaldo Soriano through our precious brother from Durban that was here not long ago. He came home and he called me. He said, I've spoken to some brothers out there in Manila. They are going to invite you. Well, I was supposed to come to Manila some 10, 12 years ago with a brother. 
Two days before taking the plane, my wife fell ill, so I had to take her to the hospital, and everything was cancelled. And it seemed like God wasn't moving anywhere, anytime. But God has his times. Amen. Amen. You know, it took, it took Elisha 10 years to fit <laughs> into the mantle. Amen. And Brother Benham says in second-hand robe, he says, God didn't cut the robe to fit Elisha. He had to shape Elisha to fit the robe. So perhaps God knew that I wasn't just ready to come meet you. And now, after 10 years or so, we are here. I'm sure that God was cutting me. God was shaping me so that I can fit the plan of God in your lives. I also would like to acknowledge our brothers from Congo. I just met them yesterday. Brother Obed and Brother Emmanuel, God bless you wherever you are seated. Amen. We are fellow servants in the harvest. I like to say that the, the wise men who came to Jerusalem, each one had their own unique gift. Now please listen carefully. The one who had gold, if he moved alone, his gift would tell one third of the story. The one who had frankincense, if he moved alone, his gift would tell one third of the story. Likewise, the one who had myrrh, if he moved alone, isolated himself, his ministry would only tell one third. But when they came together, when they worked together, the one with gold said, I see deity in him. And the other one added up and said, but I see service in him. Hallelujah. The other one says, I see him dying for mankind. So when they put their gifts together, their gifts told a complete story. Amen. I'm a firm believer in the fivefold ministry, that the fivefold ministry must circulate in the body of Jesus Christ. I don't have what Brother Soriano has. So I need his ministry. I don't have what the other ministers have. I need them because what is in them is part of my perfection. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the fivefold ministry is to perfect the bride. Uh, it always amazes me that God is perfect in himself. He can do it all by himself. But because he wants us to have part in it. Then he puts a little in that one, a little in that one, a little in that one. Amen. I come from a diamond mining country. And actually 30 minutes from where I live is one of the Kimberley branches that run underground. In Pretoria, one of the shafts comes out 30 minutes from my house. I just missed it by 30 minutes. I could have been sitting on a diamond mine. <laughs> However... If ever you visit South Africa and you visit my city, and I would like to take you to the mine, you will be surprised as to what is contained in the scriptures that lines up with diamond mining and what is in the formation of the diamonds that is contained in the word. Diamonds are formed at great depths. So the message of the hour is not shallow. Amen. It's a deep message. Amen. Amen. And diamonds are formed under great pressure. God is looking for brothers and sisters who can take the pressure of Laodicea. Amen. Amen. I observed since I arrived at the airport that hardly any women here wear dresses or skirts. You are the first sisters I've seen since I've arrived in dresses and skirts. Give yourselves a round of applause. Amen. And I'm not pretending that it is easy on our sisters for them to grow their hair like that in a country that is all the year round hot. Everybody walking around in shorts, including men. So our sisters ought to be encouraged to be appreciated. 
you are a witness without even opening your mouth. As you walk into the mall and walk out, sister, with your long hair and your proper shoes and your dresses, you are preaching a sermon. Oh, amen. We ministers just come up in the pulpit and confirm it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I am really, really blessed to be among you. I believe I could speak the whole night. My appreciation. Amen. I've always desired to come to Asia, far east. And God has granted me my desire because I thought China would be far east. But I see the Philippines a little more east than China. So you see, he's the God of extras. Hallelujah. Amen. When he gives you something you've asked for, he gives you something extra that goes with it. Amen. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Now, let me say this about the diamonds before I start my short message. Diamond, a diamond can be cut and polished only nine ways. Watch that. Nine. That's Galatians 5 and 22. You know the nine gifts? God in his wisdom knowing that love, peace, joy, nine. Those are God's diamonds. After he has taken us through the cutting and the polishing. When we come out there, whatever direction God shifts you, brother or sister, your ministry, whichever side of that great diamond you are, as long as you hit that light, the S-O-N light, you will shine a certain color. Amen. And I love to see brothers and sisters who don't only talk it, but walk it. Amen. They live it, they walk it, it's wonderful. God bless your hearts. When we were singing the song about Jubilee and heaven rejoicing because the book was taken, I had just come out of 11 series in my church on the taking of the book. In all these years, I had been reading through the book of Revelation, never really took notice that from Revelation chapter 1, Right up to Revelation chapter 22, heaven responds six times, saying, Worthy art thou, thou hast taken the book, great is thy salvation, six times. And the seventh time is John, a symbol of the bride. <laughs> Wonderful. The seventh time, John cries out and he says, All oh, heaven heard me say, Amen. The prophet says, John saw John. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know the prophet says when he went beyond the curtain of time, and it is the rising of the sun, he says, I saw all of you over there. That is amazing. That is an amazing statement. I saw all of you over there. How did he see me there? My theophany is represented. Your theophany is represented. Amen. We may be aging in this trap body. This is a pest house. It's aging. It's, everything is dropping. Uh, wait until you strike 35 if you are a man. Everything moves south. The cheeks drop. The chin drops. The belly drops. Everything drops. Amen. But we have a pickup power in us. It's called the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's called the resurrection. It's called the dynamics. And that's what we sing about. That's what we believe. While everything is dropping, there's something else that's crying for the uptake. Amen. Shall we stand to our feet? My ministry, brothers and sisters, is not preaching. I always like to be very open with people. Don't expect a preacher. I'm not a preacher, I'm not an evangelist. I love to teach. And I found out that if I stick to my calling, God does better for the people. I always say, it's difficult to be George Martin. Why must I make it worse by trying to be somebody else? Did you hear that? It's difficult already being me. 
So why must I waste my time and try to be like another preacher? I like to be myself and God can use me better. God bless you, let us take one scripture from the book of Ezekiel. I want to go into contemporary prophecy, meaning things that are happening around us right now. My scripture is Ezekiel 38. You make time to read all of it. I'll pick and select a few verses. Allow me to read verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. It's amazing how God would speak to a country like it's a man. He says, prophesy against him. Then we read in verse 5, the countries that will align with the king of the north, Persia, today called Iran, Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia today, and Libya, with them, all of them with shield and helmet, meaning ready for war. Goma, the Crimea, and all his bands, you know why it says all his bands? Because it will be very lengthy to say Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan. So God says, and all his bands. The house of Togoma, some say it's Turkey, but if you follow carefully, Togoma, Goma, it's to do with China, North Korea, etc of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee watch when we jump to verse 13 sheba sheba and dedan those are your arabian peninsula countries yemen qatar you name it sheba and dedan and the mansions of Tashish with all the young lions. Before you take your seats, young lions, Britain is called the mother of a commonwealth. And Britain has a lion as an emblem. So all the young lions are your commonwealth countries. New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, all the countries that were colonized by the English. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a joy to be in the house of the Lord. What a joy to be with brothers and sisters of like precious faith. Thank you for the songs that have warmed our hearts. Now, Lord, the atmosphere has been created. Yes. May the Holy Spirit come, take his word, break it down and feed the eaglets, we pray. For your honor and glory, all these things are done. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all shall agree by saying, Amen. Amen. You may enjoy the comfort of your seats while I remain standing. <laughs> there was this brother who was asleep in church, and he loved to sit in front, not where the pastors are, but he would always fall asleep. As soon as the pastor begins to preach, he dozes off. His wife tried to nudge him, it wouldn't work. She brought needles and pins to pinch him. He would just wake up for a while and he would sleep. So one Sunday, the pastor noticed the brother was sleeping. So the pastor started banging on the pulpit, he didn't wake up. The pastor started stomping on the pulpit, the brother didn't wake up. The pastor walked down the aisle and kicked him on the side, he didn't wake up. So the pastor came up back to the pulpit and the pastor made the statement, he said, All who are going to hell, stand on your feet! <laughs> and the brother heard, going to hell, stand on your feet, and he jumped up. <laughs> and he looked around, he noticed that he was the only one standing. But he was very quick-witted. So he said, Pastor, I don't know what the vote was about. But it looks like just you and me are standing. <laughs> so we are not here to send anybody to hell. We trust that the messages that will be preached 
throughout this convention will create a thirst in you to want to go up. I want to take a title, Watch the King of the North. Those of you who have listened to tapes, you know that in 1933, when the prophet saw those seven major visions, among them he heard the voice of God saying, Watch Russia, watch Russia, the King of the North. So for a theme, I'd like to take the Russian bear is awakening. The Russian bear is awakening. Now countries like the Philippines and South Africa, we don't have bears because we are warm countries. I'm comfortable with this temperature because back home it's 27, 28. On a good day it's 30 with rain. So I'm at home. But we don't have bears. Yes, we have lions. We have the big five, as they call them. Lions. We, we, we have leopards. We, we, we have panthers. We, we have them all. But we just don't have bears. Bears are associated with cold countries. Is that right? And mostly northernmost hemisphere countries would have bears. I would like to break down the meaning of certain names because in the message the prophet of God teaches us in Revelation book of symbols page 12 you'll hear the prophet say when you come across any name he says stop investigate because God may hide certain truths behind the names true if you look at the modern day leader of the northern country today, his name is Vladimir Putin, otherwise Vladimir Putina, as they say in Russian, I was there about two months ago. You see, Vlad in the Russian language means ruler, ruler. Mir means the world. So Vladimir means ruler of the world. Putina or Putin means the way of a spider's web. How the spider makes its web to trap an insect. So already the leader they have now, I don't know what it will be next time, but the leader they have now is playing a role. And then he has a deputy called Medvedev. Medvedev means a bear. So already God is projecting by way of signals, not only to the world, but also to the bride. Look at the names of the leaders. One is ruler of the world. They desire to rule the world one way or the other. And the other one who assists him who was a president also just a while ago, is Medvedev, and it means a bear. We know that bears hibernate. They sleep it out for some time. And the, when the prophet introduced these teachings in the early 50s and 60s, he likes to say, Russia had been asleep all this while. Watch how he runs it parallel with the nature of a bear. He says they were called bearded Cossacks. They were looked down upon by the other nations, but they were not aware that the bear was hibernating. When the time comes for a bear to awake, the first thing it wants to do is to forage, to hunt, to eat, to take. If the natural types the spiritual, as the prophet teaches, teaches us, we are almost there. Point in question. During the year, a few months ago, there was a standoff between the Russian leader and the Western leader, Barack Obama. Now before we go any further, let me see how many of you read the English Bible. How many of you have it with you? 
Right. Go with me to Judges 4. We are going to prove to you that Barack Obama is also playing a role in the scriptures. Judges chapter 4. To the glory of God, I'm going to say the following words. Before Barack Obama even ran for the leadership of his party, not even when he ran for the presidency, when he ran to be a representative of the Democrats, we found him in the scriptures. God has got a key, and the prophet left us this key. He says, scriptures have a way to repeat. And he proved it in his ministry. When his wife bought him a new Bible and the pages were stuck together, the prophet was looking to read the scripture that says, a woman in travail. She travails until she gives birth to a man child. The prophet was going to preach that woman as the bride. That is pregnant with the word, pregnant with the seed, and therefore is ready to deliver this man child, the resurrection, wedding supper, millennium, new world, new city. But the Bible was stuck together. And it seemed like the prophet was fumbling, losing his way. But God had it all planned, because sitting on the platform was also a Catholic priest who then came with a book, handed it over to the prophet, and said, be steady, my son. God has allowed this for a purpose. God is fixing to move. The prophet takes the book, he finds a place, he reads it, he closes the book, he gives it back to the priest, and the book is still closed to them. Watch those types. Open for the bride, but closed for them. And then he preaches his sermon. On the way home, you know the story by now. The wife is nervous. All pastors' wives are nervous. Every time when their husband preaches, they're nervous. They say there are three sermons you preach, pastors. It's the one you receive in the study. That's the purest. Then the one you deliver with a little bit of yourself in it. And the one that the Holy Ghost preaches to you at home. How could you have said that? Why did you say that? Is that right? The pastors are not saying amen, but that's all right. It is still the truth. However, on the way home, the wife says, Oh, Bill, I felt so nervous. It looked like all eyes were on me because I bought you the Bible. He says, No, honey. There must have been a purpose and a reason. He says, as clear as you hear my voice, God's voice quoted to him, Luke chapter 4. As his custom was, he went to the synagogue. And it's only also when you do a little bit of extra research. When you read Luke, you just think Jesus walked in, the priest gave him the book. No. The tradition of the Jews are six men read and they do not pass any comment. It is the seventh one who reads and passes the comment. So right there again, you see, Christ is that seventh seed. So by the time he is given the book in Luke 4, it means six men had read and sat down. Jesus was the seventh. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. It is exactly as the woman of the well. She had had six natural husbands. But it was time for her to meet the seventh spiritual. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woman, go get your husband. Of course, she, she didn't realize her true husband spiritually was standing in front. So... The voice of God quoted that scripture. The prophet came the next service and showed how scripture back there can come back again over here. In fact, the Lord willing, tomorrow we will continue with another of those scriptures that have come back. But let's go to Judges. Now, while you are finding the book of Judges, allow me to say, Judges were not kings. 
Neither were they priests nor prophets. Judges were like politicians today. They were ordinary men who lived their own lives and God would anoint them for a purpose to deliver Israel. So you could call them politicians of those days. Look at God uses Gideon the way he did and as soon as the anointing left Gideon he went back to his images. Simpson, a judge, anointed for a purpose but he goes from one woman to another. Most politicians do that anyway. <laughs> so when we read from the book of Judges, you immediately see modern day politicians when the scripture returns. Please find Judges 4. Allow me to read only one verse. To turn the key, you read the rest. Read with me Judges 4 verse 6. It says, And she sent and called Barak, the son of who? A, B, Noam. That's all I'm going to read. Watch. There's already a Barak, but his surname is A, B, Noam. If I had a blackboard here, I would write A, B, Noam. The same way it's written. Now imagine A, B, Noam. Now start doing what the prophet did in the message, God of this evil age. He says in that message, I've got a name written here, Evil and Elvis. He says it's one and the same thing. Because when you rearrange e Elvis, it'll give you evils. The prophet turned the key. That you can rearrange words by inspiration, of course. And you get the message behind the message. Take Diana, the princess of England. Her name is not only Diana because she's named after the Diana of the Ephesians. It also has a code, a hidden message in it. D-I-A-N-A -A also means died in a nasty accident. Diana. <laughs> so God can encode it just like William Marion Brenham. It's not just a name. When you look at it, it's will I am, right? right. To marry us on to the seed right. of Elohim. Wow. Brand means seed. Yeah. If you eat your Kellogg's in the morning, just read at the back, please. It'll say made out of the finest brand. Seed. And H I H that H I M at the end. H-A-M, H-I-M, Ibrahim, Avraham, if you speak Hebrew, it's one and the same thing. It's a part of his name. So the prophet's names signify who he was. Now let's go to A.B. Noam. If you rearrange A.B. Noam, you take the I and the N from A.B. Noam, you put it down here. You take the O, you put it over there, the B and the A and the M-A. A.B. Noam, when it is rearranged, spells in Obama. So hidden in the book of Judges is a politician that lived back then as a shadow and a type. And how that in the last days it will repeat just like it did in the prophet's ministry. Based on this, hidden in number 4, chapter 4, you could see he's a man from a family of four. It's him, his wife Michelle, and the two daughters. And you start seeing when he won, there are number fours. When he was inaugurated, you begin to see the fours coming in there. We declared it from the word, he won the presidency. Then when he had to run for the re-election, where is it found? Chapter 5. Watch, we are coming to Russia. In chapter 5 of Judges, and you read verse 12, there again it is encoded that he would win the re-election. It says, awake, awake. How many times has it said? Twice. Awake, first election. Awake, second election, re-election. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake. Utter a song, arise, Barak. And lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. 
Remember that the Barak spirit depends largely on women's support. And that's how this man made it into the presidency. Most women supported him. But when you look at the end of Barak in the scriptures, he lost his glory to a woman. Yael stole his thunder, as we say in English. So once this key turns, you'll then appreciate a quotation where the prophet says, there are different gifts in the body of Jesus Christ. And the prophet was speaking of his gift. He says, here's the gift of wisdom. Paul begins with his gift. He says, the gift and the ability to take the word, put it together, and show the people where they are standing. He was talking of his ministry. Now let us explore. So the stage is set. And I'd like to go to Luke 3 with you. To show you another stage. In Luke chapter 3. Let us read verses 1, 2 and 3. And you'll appreciate that hidden in the word of God. The God who knows all things. Are these truths. In Luke 3. We read strangely. The introduction. And this is how it reads. It says. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea, and of the region of Trachonitis, and Licinius, the tetrarch of Ibelini. Watch. Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of God came unto John. Why does God first map out the political setup? Yes. He introduces the political setup Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, Herod over here, Philip over there. You, you see what he's doing? Then after he sets the political scene, he comes to the religious scene. Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest. And then he comes to the third and most important category. The word of the Lord came to John. It is always those three like your pools. So today you could put it this way. Pope Francis being the Pope in Rome. Barack Obama being the president in the USA. Vladimir Putin in Russia. See what he's doing? Religious, political. The word of the Lord bypassed them all and came to William Branham and the bride. <laughs> Same setup. So once that key turns, you're able to place everything in the position where it belongs. Watch now quickly. When you take a cruise through the scriptures, you know that in Genesis 4, only six generations of Cain are declared. Go read it. Only six lineages of Cain are declared. Because God has given you a prefigure of the one who was marked. And God is prefiguring the 666. Then when you read verse 16, it will tell you how his seed moved eastward. If you understand where the Garden of Eden was... It would be east. If they move east, that is Jordan going into Iraq, Iran, and Syria going, moving on, moving on. But who is Russia today? Genesis 10 verse 2, and I'm just giving you the verses. The descendants of Rosh. The country becomes Russia. When the scripture speaks in Ezekiel, where we've just read, it speak of the prince of Meshech. That's the derivative of Moscow. Moskva. When it speaks of the other little town there. It's Tobolsk. Tarshish. These are modern day names that originate from some of the early settlements in the land of Russia. The prophet of God says in Jubilee year, look at the quotation, Jubilee year, and this is 2013 Jubilee, 50 years after 63. 
1954, he preached Jubilee here. In paragraph 89 and 90, he says, 100 years ago, Russia was still asleep, looked down upon as a reprobate, and rejected. He says, but alas, God is going to awake them because they've got a part to play in the scriptures in the last days. What part? Because when you study the book of Kings, oh God have mercy. There is a king, Ahab. Did you know that Ahab is the seventh king since Jeroboam? Jeroboam the backslidden king who brought in idol worship. After Jeroboam, then comes Nadab, then comes Nashon, then comes... By the time you come to Omri, Omri is the sixth and then he fathers the seventh, which is Ahab. Look at that! When the seventh king is on the throne, there's an Elijah on the scene. It's a type of your church ages. When John Fitzgerald Kennedy took the presidency, Contrary to the constitution of the forefathers, they had signed that they would never again be led by a Catholic because they had left Ireland and all those places, Scotland, for freedom of religion. The forefathers who came into America were like the first kings of Israel, God-fearing. But as time rolled on, Israel became complacent, relaxed, and then there was an Ahab. When there was an Ahab, he had a wife, Jezebel, who set the fashion scene. And there, the scriptures repeated, when there was a John Fitzgerald Kennedy Catholic, he had a wife that set the fashion scene. Jacqueline. Also starting with a J, like Jezebel. And the prophet cried out because he had looked into the mystery of the scriptures that were running at the time. When he saw Ahab and he saw Jezebel physical and Jezebel Rome, he knew he was Elijah. The only thing missing was the widow woman. So he preached Elijah and the meal offering because the meal offering came from the widow woman. Amen. Amen. And he says the meal is Christ. So you preach Christ all the time, pastor, you will see bride members popping up from everywhere. <laughs> preach the word, they will pop up. Preach Christ and the meal offering, the widow woman will make her presence known. So when the prophet saw the scene was set, he knew where he was. And therefore, he knew that fire would fall from the heavens very soon. Amen? So watch what happens. He says, Russia, in recognizing your day in its message, part of 174, he says, Russia has recognized his place to fulfill the scriptures. Why? Because when Jezebel had to be punished, you must listen carefully, God raised a man by the name of Jehu. Jehu punished Jezebel. So who's Jehu today? It's got to be the king of the north. Somebody is being raised up because Jezebel is overshadowing the earth with her doctrine and seduction. So, if there is a Jehu, watch Russia. Watch Russia, the king of the north. We see that what part they play. We've already identified the widow woman. That's the bride. Elijah has come. Elijah has gone. Let me stop right here. Some people still stumble at the death of William Brenham. They don't watch the scriptures. How did Elijah leave the earth in a chariot? A flaming chariot. Today, Nahum, when he saw motor cars, he said the chariots of those days shall have flaming torches. Headlamps. They shall rage in the broadways, highways. They shall jostle one another, accidents. So he called modern day cars chariots. And you still wonder why Elijah had to leave the earth through a chariot? <laughs> oh my! To prove that God had not made a mistake. His wife died in the accident. 
Billy Paul came across and said, Daddy, Daddy, mother has died. And he said, put her hand in mine. To prove that the anointing was still with him. The anointing did not leave the prophet. He prayed and she resurrected. He said, Lord, you gave us Joseph and he's still a little boy. Bring back her life so she can raise him. So if God had left him, what about the power of the resurrection? But he was playing the part of Elijah. The prophet of God says in handwriting on the wall, he says, Russia has them Sputniks aimed at us these days. Watch, he was identifying the king of the north. Has that one missile. Don't forget now that Ahab died by a single blow. Go read the scriptures. Ahab was hit by one missile. With all the defense that he wore, all the protection, yet God guided that arrow, hallelujah, that was shot by a man presumptuously during war. One missile, it hit the weakest spot of his harness. I don't care how protected they say they are, the word of the Lord through Elijah will come to pass. Now, let us introduce this king of the north quickly. You know when you read Revelation 16, 12, mark it and read it, it also speaks about making a way for the kings of the east. Making a way for the kings of the east. Why? What do the kings of the east need a way for? Because they will have to move from the east very soon, traveling kind of westward, Israel's way. Let us stop right here and bring in the prophet's words. The prophet of God, after he said, watch Russia, watch Russia, the king of the north, then he makes another statement. He says, watch when Russia comes for that oil. Now, wait a minute. Most people say Israel has no oil. No, they do. They just didn't know it themselves until 10 years ago. You must listen very carefully. The lowest part of the earth, all of the earth, the lowest part of the earth is in Israel, Jericho. Are you listening? Jericho is the lowest part. No wonder when Christ had to play out the plan of redemption, he had to go to Jericho to meet with Zacchaeus. Why? Zacchaeus is the shortest man in the lowest city. Talk about being low. So Zacchaeus jumps up a tree, natural tree, and he looks down on the tree of life. The picture is not right. Natural man, born in sin, shaped in iniquity, climbs up a natural tree, tree to look down. He means to see Jesus, but the picture is not right. You're looking down on the tree of life. But because God is always merciful, as Jesus approaches the tree, he says, Zacchaeus, watch, Zacchaeus, Climb down. When Zacchaeus climbs down, remember he's the shortest man, now he's forced to look up. There's the picture. Come down your high tree so we can look up to him. So when he looks up to him, the tree of life, the picture is correct. Jesus says, salvation has come to your house. <laughs> Hallelujah. No wonder Romans says we are all born in sin and we are all short of the glory of God. We are all Zacchaeuses, short of the glory of God. <laughs> I love the way God can project it. Amen. Oh, this is wonderful. Why do the kings of the east want to come to Israel? Because you must listen carefully. They have discovered oil in the land of Israel. It's in the papers, but Israel isn't saying much about it. I hope this sign does not mean anything bad in this country. In my country, it means they are quiet about it. Listen very carefully, brothers and sisters. All the oil that they are pumping in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, wherever, Lebanon, Libya over here, all the oil that they are pumping, they have discovered 
the oil through those pipes are subsidiaries. They are little outlets. <laughs> now that those oils that they are pumping are beginning to dry up, they are realizing that in Israel there's a basin, the lowest part of the earth. All the oil is collecting in there. So very soon, when they no longer can pipe out, pump it out through their pipes, they will know that the oil lays where? In Israel. The prophecy of the prophet will be fulfilled. Watch when Russia comes for that oil. Because the greater part of Russia's oil is through Iran. That's why they are friends. In fact, Iran was called Persia until 1935. Then they became Iran. But in 1932, three years before they changed their name, they signed an agreement with Russia. Listen, Persia signed an agreement with Russia that if Russia wants to attack Israel, they can pass through Iraq and Iran. John saw it 2,000 years ago in Revelation 16, 12. So everything is set and ready. What's holding it up? The bride. We have to leave before the rest of these prophecies come to pass. And how perfect the natural types the spiritual. When the Holy Ghost first fell upon the earth, did it fall in the Philippines? No. Did it fall in South Africa? No. Did it fall in America? No. Did it fall in England? No. The first ever coming down of the Holy Ghost was in the land of Israel. That's why natural oil must be there. Because one is a natural oil, the other one is a spiritual oil. One is below, another one comes from above. Just like in Acts chapter 2, are you listening? All the nations came to Jerusalem to get the oil from above. Very soon, all the nations will turn their attention to Israel to get the natural oil. But the bride leaves with the Holy Ghost. He that will let, will let. Until he, the Holy Ghost, is taken away. The prophet says, that's the Holy Ghost leaving in the bride. So they will be left with the natural oil, but we are taking the spiritual oil with us. Now, Ezekiel 38, as we taper down to close, Ezekiel 38 is a summary of your NATO countries and your Warsaw Pact countries. NATO countries are America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, all your commonwealth, the young lions. Did we read it? We read it in Ezekiel 38. The young lions fall under NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. But as soon as NATO was formed, Russia formed the Warsaw Pact. So it divided the world into two parts in order to fit Ezekiel 38 as prophecy rose. And of course in English when you say war saw, you can say saw war. <laughs> Russia already saw the war that's coming and they began to prepare but they didn't realize that they are fitting the prophecy of Ezekiel chapter 38. Now why does the voice of God repeat twice? Watch Russia, watch Russia, the king of the north. Let us read Genesis 41, 32. And here we will share with you a secret sometimes that happens in our lives, especially dreams. When Joseph interprets the dreams to the butler and the baker, he says in Genesis 41 and 32, he says, and for that, that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh. Sorry, unto Pharaoh. And of course, uh, 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 he had interpreted the dreams of the buckler and the baker. But here he's saying to Pharaoh, the reason why the dream came twice. How? One minute you saw seven fat kine, cattle, 
swallowing up the seven lean ones. Then the dream repeats. Excuse me. You see seven fat ears of corn and seven lean ones blasted with the wind. He says the reason that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God. When God repeats it, it means he means it. It is going to happen. Sometimes you have a dream and you don't know what it is all about. The prophet says you ask God if it is a dream from God to repeat it. He will bring other symbols. Same dream, different symbols. That's why the prophet preached the message, God works on both sides of the stick. I wish we had time to speak to the youth. Because the youth, when they're going through those stages of, I want to get married. If they don't know that God speaks on both sides, you'll end up with the wrong partner. If on your side, God has confirmed it's him, sister, you wait. If it's the same God, he'll confer to him that you are the her. Can I prove that quickly? When the prophet's first wife died, he wasn't going to remarry. He says it himself. But God told him to marry and gave him the date. That's right. He says, 23rd, I think he said, 23rd October 1941. That's the date you marry her. He didn't run to her. He didn't run to me and say, oh, God spoke to me. No. He knew that if it's God, God has to reveal it to her. So he sat with the date, knowing she's to be the one. Then he went and tested her. He said, you are a nice young lady. I'm a widower. People are beginning to talk out there about a minister who lost his wife, has a little son, and the friend of the dead wife keeps visiting to wash the washing and to spruce up the house. You know, tongues are wagging. You are a nice girl. Go find yourself a Christian man. See the test? It's like he's pushing her away. Sometimes that's when you really know whether it's him or her. He says, go find yourself a Christian man. Go pray. You all know that she went to pray with her Bible closed. She was praying for her husband. She says, while she was praying, she heard the leaves of the Bible ruffle and rifle. When she opened her eyes, it was Malachi 4. Behold, I'll send you, Elijah. Behold, I'll send. You see how scriptures can double up. It's behold, I'll send the bride, Elijah, but God used the same scripture for an individual. I will send you, Elijah. She closed it. She prayed again. She thought it must just be the wind or something. It happened. When she got up from there, she ran to Brother Branham and said, a strange thing happened. I was praying for her husband and twice the Bible opened to Malachi 4, 5 and 6. Then he knew that God had confirmed on his side and confirmed on her side. Amen. There again you see how one scripture can play many roles. Malachi 4, send the bride Elijah, but Malachi 4, send Sister Midi, her husband. Oh, it's wonderful. So the reason why the voice of God in the vision of 1933 said twice, Watch Russia, watch Russia, the king of the north. It's because this thing is settled with God. And it's building up. There was a standoff in the course of this year between Putin and Barack. And everybody looked to see who's going to back down first. And Barack backed down first. I said to the church, the vision, the seventh vision has started. No American president has ever backed down since 1776. So when they had that, uh, and he backed down, I said, church, watch Russia, watch Russia. The vision is running already. The prophet of God goes into pains to explain to us what started communism. He says, it's Romanism, stealing their gold. Right? Now you go to the scriptures now, and you see Ahab, when Ahab became very blessed, 
What did he do? He started persecuting those who believed Elijah's message. Naboth, a believer of Elijah's message. Do you know that America now with this new law of spying on people, they have another law now that they can lock you up for seven years if they think you are a religious fanatic. Can't you see where Ahab is going to? Ahab is becoming ever so powerful, America. Ahab is becoming ever so comfortable. And Ahab today is repeating the mistake of Ahab back then. That law is targeted at the bride. They may not know it, but it's Satan through them. Did you know that they have a 12-point system before I close? 12-point system by which they are going to start the squeeze? Oh, let me share this with you. The prophet of God said in 1963, in look away to Jesus. Because in 1963, 64, 65, the Vatican held a secret meeting called Vatican Number 2. They passed certain agreements to squeeze the churches back into Mother Rome. And then they narrowed it down to 12 points. Can I quickly rush through those points? And you will see how guilty you are. <laughs> Number one point that will tag you for the squeeze, if you believe in one God. We are already guilty because we believe in one God. Number two, if you believe in a prophet other than the Pope, and we believe in a prophet other than the Pope. Number three, if you believe in a fivefold ministry and not the priesthood of Rome, we are guilty. We believe in a fivefold ministry. If you believe in supporting those ministers with your tithing, we are guilty. If you preach that women must be subservient, meaning as our sisters obey the word, I don't know just exactly what they are trying to get to, but they are saying if you preach subservience, man, woman to man, woman not to speak in the house of the Lord, it's another tag. And then they move on from there. If you read any other books, and we read the seals, we read the church ages. It seems like they were sitting there looking at us as they were tabulating the 12 points. And then the last one they say, if you believe in a sudden catching away, a rapture. Give God the glory. So we are ready. Bring it on, Ahab. Bring it on. The bride is ready. Naboth is ready. Micaiah is ready. Hallelujah. We are standing on the word of God through Elijah. Oh, bless your heart. So he explains that communism came as a result of the Roman Catholic Church. It's the truth. Even the Catholic Church knows it, that they stole their gold. In the pre-1917 revolutions of Lenin, then the prophet of God began to say, I predict that there will be three curtains. You've heard him say that. He said, the bamboo curtain. Look at China today. China has risen. When the prophet spoke it back then, China was still asleep. Then he said, the iron curtain. When he spoke it back there, Russia was still a bit asleep. He said, but watch that purple curtain. It's in the message conference. Amen. He says, Russia is only a pebble on the beach, just playing a small part in greatest battle ever fought. He says, but watch Romanism. You know what happened, brother? In 1989, Revelation 17 kicked into motion. Mm -hmm. Why? In 1989, suddenly, we were told that communism is no more. The Berlin Wall came down. It seemed like everything is opening up. But go read Revelation 17, 17. The Bible says God will allow that for a short while. Then when you read Revelation 17, 17, it says they will turn. It means communism is coming back. They will give their power to the beast for a while until the words of God be fulfilled. Church of God, you'll appreciate why we are celebrating 50 years. Our time is also up. 
We can't remain here forever. The Jubilee has sounded. It's time to pick up and say, Lord, I'm homeward bound. Watch how everything is squeezing together from all around. And God is saying to the bride, it's your jubilee year. It's going home time. Hallelujah. And these things we're picking up now before I close. I've been speaking exactly one hour. Give me five minutes and then I'll round it up. I believe in the message of the hour. I don't mind if you believe in the message of the hours and hours, that's all right. I'm talking about myself, amen. Because in the scriptures, Peter preached 30 minutes and 3,000 souls were added. Paul preached all night and a man died. But lucky for that man, the man who preached all night had the power of the resurrection. So I usually say in my church, if any brother wants to preach all night, that's all right. But I better watch whether he has the power of the resurrection. Because if somebody falls dead, he had better raise him up. (laughs) Amen? So somewhere between 30 minutes and the whole night, you will find me preaching about an hour. In fact, COD 907 ministers, COD volume 2, 907 to 908. The prophet says, don't do what I do. He says, I am making tapes. That's why he went two and a half hours, three hours, four hours, the prophet said. He says, but you, you go about an hour, an hour 15, an hour and a half, close the service. He says, the people go home refreshed and blessed. It's a direct quote. Nine zero seven nine zero eight. I live by that quote, God bless you. So, <laughs> God bless you. That's me. God bless you. Amen. So, then the prophet is around in 1960, 1961. He looks at the image of Daniel. Gold, silver, brass, and then iron legs. And they end up in iron and clay. Who would have known, except God revealed to his prophet, who would have known that when Khrushchev, took off his shoe and beat on that pulpit at the meeting where there was Eisenhower representing the western countries, Khrushchev representing the five eastern countries, the prophet locked into the mystery. He says, there we have arrived at the toes of the image of Daniel. We're at the end of the kingdoms. You see, it's the key that God turns. Today, Russia's foreign minister goes by the name of love, of love, but there's no love there. <laughs> no, no, this is not from Russia with love. This is from Russia with love, of. They are raised up to play the part of Jehu slaying Jezebel. But as we close, do not forget that Jehu slew two people. And I'm going to leave you with that homework. Jehu slew. Two people. The first one was Jezebel. Second one, rather, was Jezebel. But he had also slain another one by the name of Jehoram. It is hidden in the scriptures. The Jehu who slays Jehoram is the very Jehu who slays Jezebel. And the prophet says, the very Russia that has a bomb with America's name on it. He says the same Russia has a bomb with Rome's name on it. So there's your Jehu. It fits the scriptures. Now as we close, did you know that the Bible speaks of three Babylons? Yes, three. The first Babylon is the one you read about in the book of Kings. Everybody knows that one. Then, turn with me as we close to Revelation 17 for the second Babylon, and you will see the way God hid it in the word. The way it's written in order to identify the second and the third Babylon. The second one is Revelation 17, and we read verse 16. It says, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make it desolate and naked, 
and shall eat her flesh. Read the last statement with me. And burn her with fire. The prophet says, atomic. Can you see the scripture already declared that Rome will burn? Mystery Babylon. Now watch the third Babylon in Revelation 18. In Revelation 18, and we are closing with that one. In Revelation 18, we are reading verse 21. It says, I found it. Revelation 18, 20 and 21, it says, Rejoice over her. It's another Babylon. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. Why? God has avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Watch. The Babylon, mystery Babylon of Revelation 17 is burned with fire. But there's another one that must sink. I think you got it now. Los Angeles, California. Another part, because the world is defiled today, not only by Rome, in an entertainment, worldly way. Look at what Hollywood is doing. And I always say to the youth in my church, it's not Hollywood, it's Holy Word. The difference between us and them out there they are holy wood, we are holy word. Stay with the word and holy wood will have nothing to do with it. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, there you go. The stage is set. Watch Russia, watch Russia, the king of the north. Now, I have two minutes to close this service. Turn with me to my very last scripture, Joel. Some people say Joel. Some say Joel. Joel 2, 20 is my closing scripture. Then I shall have spoken for one hour, five minutes. Joel 2, 20. Watch how God depicts the battle that is coming and how Russia will attack Israel and how Israel will be turned back by the power of God. They will lose the battle against little Israel. Why? It's again a repeat of David and Goliath. Look at how little Israel is. And look at Gog and Magog and all their bands. They'll be coming like a Goliath again. Don't miss tomorrow and the day after. Let's close with Joel. Joel 2. And you will see how God maps out the battle in the book of Joel. Let me just find Joel. There it is. Let us read verse 20 and 21. Maybe I should read from 18 because we are closing. Joel 2, 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. Can you see that? The land, Israel. Like you are the land, the message. Oh, don't miss the next services. And he will pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and... There, God already told you Israel has got oil. Right there. And ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Now watch when Armageddon comes. But I will remove far off from you the who? There you go. There's your Gog and Magog making an appearance in the book of Joel. And I will remove from you the northern army and will drive him into a land that is barren. I'll drive them into Jordan and desolate. And his face toward the East Sea. That's the Dead Sea. And his hinder part toward the utmost sea. That's the Mediterranean. And his stink shall come up and his ill savour shall come up because he has done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Do you see that? God says, I will defeat your enemies for you. Rejoice! And we are celebrating our jubilee. Rejoice! When the nations... 
come against Israel, God will fight against them. When the denominations come against you, God will fight against them. <laughs>